Have you ever ordered a product online only to realize it doesn't work for what you intended it to do? Then often life gets busy and you miss the return window. This has happened to me many times and it's super frustrating because it's a waste of money and often plastic. In this episode of There's a 3D Print for That Challenge, I want to share with you how I use 3D printing to prevent the waste of one of these non-returnable products. You're probably wondering what's the there's a 3D print for that challenge. Well, I introduced this challenge in my last video titled How I Save Mother's Day with 3D Printing, which you can find up here. But let me give you a summary. One of the major complaints about 3D printing is that all that it produces is trinkets, tchotchkes, and other useless things that end up in the trash. The goal of the there's a 3D print for that challenge is to try to disprove this concept. And I'm going to do that by trying to solve everyday problems around the house with 3D printing. Now, I recognize everyday problems is a very subjective term, so I created some rules, more like guidelines. First one is the design has to solve an actual real problem that comes up. Two, I have to design it myself in CAD software, which means I can't just download other people's designs. And third, the design and print has to hold up over time. I have two young daughters and they have their own awesome craft area. Unfortunately, this craft area is located in our dining room slash kitchen. This craft area has been great for my daughters. I believe it's helped them with their creativity and their fine motor skills. However, for me and my wife, it's a losing battle trying to keep all their supplies organized and somewhat clean. Well, in one of our attempts, we decided to order a pegboard online with a bunch of attachments. One of these attachments ended up not working for my daughters because they had a difficult time sliding the drawers back in. And by the time we realized this, unfortunately, the return window had expired. That's okay, I thought. I have a pegboard in the basement for my workshop. These attachments could work for me. Unfortunately, my daughter's pegboard was a slot-based pegboard based on the metric system, and my pegboard was a hole-based pegboard based on the imperial system. In other words, these attachments would not fit into my pegboard. Alas, I was thwarted again and a waste of money and a waste of material. So around after a week of staring at them frustratingly every time I walked by them, I realized I have a 3D printer. I can design and 3D print an adapter that will allow me to use these slot-based pegboard attachments on my whole base pegboard. So I took some measurements, did a rough sketch on paper, and jumped into CAD to start designing. If you've seen my other videos, you know I do a lot of designing in Tinkercad because it's great for beginners and is actually quite powerful. However, for a project like this that requires more precise measurements, I wanted to use a parametric modeling software. And in this case, I used Onshape because I find it really powerful and easy to use once you learn the foundation. And it's free for makers and cloud-based, so all you need is a browser. When modeling something this complex, I often break it down into smaller parts and model each one separately and test them. That way, I can catch my mistakes along the way. I first started by designing a basic hook for my standard whole base pegboard. And I used the design based off of the metal hooks I'd bought from the store. I printed it and with a few minor adjustments, it came out great and it could support quite a bit of the weight. The second thing I designed was the adapter. This was basically a flat 3D print with the correct holes for the slot based attachment to fit into. I printed it, tested it, and it worked great. I thought, all right, that's great. Now that I have these two parts that work well, the easy part is combining them together and it will be perfect. But often you'll find when designing, it's a little more complicated than just combining two parts together to make a working part. Anyway, I combined them all together using an assembly in Onshape, which is a great feature in parametric modeling software such as Onshape. If you want to see the full screencast of my Onshape design for this, click on the link above, either here or here. Then I exported it and loaded it up into the slicer, oriented it so it required the least amount of support and printed it. So I was super excited to test it 
after 3D printing it. And in my excitement of testing it, when I put it into the pegboard, one of the pegs that went into the pegboard snapped. And that surprised me because it felt like I hadn't used that much force. And when I'd done it with my hooks, it felt very stable and very solid. So I made a couple of adjustments. I changed the angle the hook was going on. I changed some slicer settings such as infill percentage and infill type, but nothing seemed to work. Every time I tried to put the adapter into the pegboard, it snapped. It even snapped once when I was taking off supports. That's when I realized I'd made a classic 3D printing mistake. I'd oriented design to print so it required the least amount of support. I do this all the time because I hate wasting the material for support. It can be a pain to take off supports and it often leaves not the nicest surface. However, what that meant is that I hadn't taken the layer orientation into account and it caused a weak point. Let me illustrate this. The original test hook that worked really well, the layer lines were perpendicular to the stress point versus the new one when I combined them, the layer lines were parallel to the stress point, causing it to snap at that point. So now that I figured out what the problem was, I needed to figure out the solution. So I decided to take a modular approach instead. This approach gives me an advantage of being able to print the hooks separately than the adapter. That way, when I print the hooks, I can print them with the correct layer line orientation without having any supports at all, like I did with my original hooks. A modular approach also means I can use this system for other pegboard attachments, so I get the best of both worlds. So I designed a clip system where the hooks clip into the adapter with two holes. Each clip has a slot in it to give a little bit of give, but I wanted to make sure it fit really tightly so that I didn't have to use glue or anything else when attaching it. After printing the hooks in the correct orientation and printing the adapter separately, I was really excited to assemble them. So I assembled the hooks into an adapter plate. I had to use a clamp to assemble them because they were a really tight fit. But as I said, that was on purpose. And guess what? It worked. It was strong and it fit perfectly. Now let's take a look at the final results. I'm pretty happy with how they came out. They look great. They're really easy to use and they're durable. Now I just have to take the time to organize my stuff in these beautiful pegboard attachments. As usual, I will be posting all the STLs for this on my website, which you can find in the description below. Feel free to download these STL files and adapt them and change them to your heart's content. See what other pegboard attachments you can make using the same modular system. And remember, take the time to create and learn every day. Mm.